Hello everybody, Dan here. In this video, I wanna do something a little bit different and show you my iPhone. This is literally just it today. Um, I haven't really changed anything or set it up for this video, uh, but I wanted to give you a view into how I have my phone set up because personally, I love iPhone tours and what's in your bag and vault tours and EDC videos, even though I'm not a big everyday carry person. Um, but I really enjoy this content and I realized that I've never really seen anybody else with quite as many apps as I have. I definitely consider myself an app addict. I'm very quick to download apps and try them and like see if I can integrate them into my phone. And so I wanted to give you a tour about what I have found as my favorite apps and the ones that I use the most, as well as how I have my apps set up. And as you'll see, I don't actually use every single app that I have, some I just keep on my phone just in case, even though I never actually use them. But I do use a lot of apps very frequently. So I wanted to give you a quick tour of what I have going on so that you might be able to find an app that you like as well. Uh, yeah, I got my phone in my hand right here. You're probably seeing it on your screen or you're definitely seeing it on the screen right now. So let's just jump into it. So the screen we're looking at right now is my main screen. So before Apple released widgets, what I used to always do on this screen number one was leave the bottom row empty. And I did this for a visualization so I could easily see at a glance that I'm on page one rather than page two or three or anything else like that. Now I kind of have a calendar here to kind of give that visual key in terms of what page I am on. So I have this widget in the top right where I flip through a few different things like the weather. I have calendar items. This is, a, I think, just a free uh, thing that auto populates based on Siri suggestions. Um, weather again, some stock stuff, a clock to have easy access to my alarms, uh, and then deliveries, which I'll show this app a little bit later. But on this front page, I kind of keep main applications. So ones from Apple, I got calendar, I've got email, I got calendar, photos, settings, maps, all the like basic applications are on this home screen. You'll see that I have both Apple Photos as well as Google Photos. Google Photos I'm not using as much, but there are some photos in there and the search on app on Google Photos is so much better than the search on Apple Photos. So I just kind of keep both of them here even though I'm not really using Google as much these days. Uh, but starting from the top left, we've got MiniCal. MiniCal is a fantastic, just basic calendar application. Um, I like this a lot more. I used to use Fantastical. I used it for years. I still have it on my phone because I like the natural language input for events. So I'll usually often create events in Fantastical still, but actually looking at my calendar I do that using MiniCal. And then Proton Mail is my main uh, mail application. I moved away from Gmail a while ago. Uh, I moved away from a lot of Google services a while ago. Uh, so Proton is what I use as my main calendar app. Although I have Gmail as well. Usually that's just for work. Uh, right now I don't have a job that uses Gmail, but I haven't found a different app to put in its place. And I like the layout, so I just keep it here right now. Overcast. Fantastic podcast app. Um, Apple Maps, because Apple Maps is superior to Google Maps in every way, shape, or form at this point. Um, if you're not using Apple Maps, most likely it is because when Apple Maps launched, it was kind of botched and it wasn't very good. And then in the subsequent years, it definitely caught up to Google Maps and then surpassed it. And I think a lot of people took that initial impression and then never tried it again. If that is you and you are not using Apple Maps, I encourage you to give it a try because I think that it is five to 10 times better than Google Maps. And I highly recommend you use it as well. Uh, we got photos, we got settings, App Store, uh, home, because I have a lot of smart home stuff around my apartment uh, that I'm doing. And then Copilot is a budgeting and money-based management app. I'm not gonna open it up here, but I tried this, I don't know, maybe six months ago and I've been really enjoying the functionality. Think of it like old school Mint when that was a big thing, um, but designed for Apple. So it feels very Apple-like and I really like it a lot. 
And so that's the home screen. Uh, let's talk about the bottom. I have phone on the bottom, kind of like, I forget what this is called, but the, the thing that's apps accessed on every single screen. Um, I don't use phone that often, but muscle memory is there. And so I just keep it there. Next is browser. For browser, I recently switched, recently being like a month ago, from Safari, which I used forever, to Orion. Now, Orion is made by the same company that does Kagi, which is a search engine that is an alternative to Google search that I think personally is way better than Google search. So I tried DuckDuckGo for a while. DuckDuckGo, I didn't really like because the search results were kind of junk. I found myself still going back to Google search. With Kagi, the search results are better than Google search. Uh, it's a paid service, which I like because I'm not the uh, product, I am the end consumer and I just pay for a service. Uh, but Kagi is fantastic. And I also really like Orion. So I gave it a try maybe like a month or two ago and I haven't missed Safari at all. So that's what I'm using. Next we have wallet because I use Apple Pay and uh, the wallet all the time for different uh, airline tickets or, or different things. So that is easy to access at the bottom there. And then messages because I use uh, Apple messages all the time. And so that's the home screen. Let's move on to the second screen. Now we can see I use a lot of folders and you'll probably see just how many apps that I have. I have these organized in a way that kind of makes sense to my brain rather than uh, any sort of like Apple automatic categorization thing. I know that they released kind of, we can sw swap to it at the very end now. This, which I never really got used to, I still like to manually uh, organize all of my apps like this. Uh, and most of the time, actually, when I'm navigating to most apps, I am using Spotlight. So I'm swiping down, I'm typing in whatever I want to use, and then accessing the apps from here. Uh, so I use Spotlight a lot, but I keep everything on the home screen anyway. So jumping into productivity, one password I use all the time. Uh, calculator, I usually will search for it in Spotlight. Guitar Tuna, when I used to play the guitar, but I don't really anymore. Forest is fantastic. It is a Pomodoro app. So if I want to get something done and I want to set a period of time for me to work, I'll set something, I'll set up a Pomodoro in Forest and then use that as a timer to do my work. So this I use not as frequently as I should, but it is there for when I want to do Pomodoros. Um, and then to do is it was replaced by things, which I actually have on this screen here. You'll see it in the lower left but I still have to do on my phone just because it's kind of a snapshot in time of maybe like four years ago. And so it was kind of fun still to have that, even though I don't actually use to do any more in favor of things. Next is all my money apps. I have all of them that you could possibly think. Anything that's related to money just kind of goes in here. Um, the first page is the ones that I use most frequently. So I bank with several banks. And so that's what I have here. Um, but other than that, if it's money related, I just drop it into that folder. Next is computer. Uh, in here, the interesting ones to call out, uh, RoboKiller, I currently have premium. RoboKiller's value proposition is that they screen calls for spam and they can kind of block them from getting to your phone. This was great, maybe like two years ago when there were a bunch of spam calls. I don't think it actually works that much anymore, but I still have it on my phone. Next is Pins. Pins is an iOS app for Pinboard, which is a social bookmarking service that I've used for like 15 years now. So I still have this and it allows me easy access to my pins. Organizer is for my home server that I'm running in the other room. This allows me to access radar, sonar, everything else that's running on my home server. Uh, I've set it up right now so it only works on my local network just for security reasons. But theoretically, I could reverse proxy it and access it anywhere. And so for a few apps, I do that. But majority of the time, Organizer is actually something I'm accessing on my computer, on my laptop, rather than my phone. But I have it here just in case I need it. Uh, next is Blackmagic, which is a more advanced video filming uh, application. Don't use it that frequently, but... When I want to take nice video, it is there for all of the manual functions and all of the really nice video shooting that I might want to do. Neural Cam is the same thing. It is a nicer camera application. 
A majority of the time I'm using neural cam if I'm shooting in low light because the low light algorithm in neural cam is better than the default one on the camera app for iOS. So I have that here just in case I want to shoot on uh, my phone in dark light. Uh, next is Luna C. This again is also for my home server. This I also can only access on my local network. And this is where I'm primarily manually accessing things on my home server. Kagi for Safari is the plugin for Safari to be able to use Kagi search. Uh, I used to use this when I used Safari, but now I'm mainly using Orion, which Orion has Kagi built in, so I don't actually use that much anymore. Uh, and Photosync is a fairly new addition, because uh, like I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, I switched away from Google Photos, and what I replaced it with is something running on my home server called Photo Prism. Uh, and so Photo Prism is a, a self-hosted alternative to Google Photos. It is not as good by any means. It is not a one-for-one -one replacement, uh, but it is more privacy focused and it goes towards my goal of moving away from Google services. And Photo Sync is what allows me to automatically sync photos from my iPhone to uh, Photo Prism. So this is the app that I use for this. Um, and I bought their lifetime membership. I think it's like $10. So PhotoSync is just there forever. Um, once we swipe past page one on some of these folders, I don't really access these very much. Um, TurboScan is definitely the scanner app that I use. Uh, you can see things like Google Sheets, Google Docs, which if I have to access them, I can. I don't really use Dropbox that much. Play is uh, a YouTube playlist creator app that is really good, but... I never actually use. Um, it was one of those like aspirational app downloads that I don't never ended up actually using, but I still have here anyway. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, the other one on this screen that I use a lot is Bound. Bound is an audiobook player for when you manually like download audiobooks. So if you have MP3 files you want to play as audiobooks, you can just load them into Bound, which is fantastic. Um, and then the other one here, Proton VPN, is the VPN that I currently use. I used to use the one right next to it, PIA, which is Private Internet Access VPN. Uh, but since I have a premium Proton account, I'm using their VPN, which I like a lot. Anything else here? Nothing really on this screen that I use very frequently. Uh, nothing really on this screen that I use very frequently. And then... Apollo, I just couldn't bring myself to remove it. I used to use Apollo for Reddit all the time, and then it disappeared during the big Reddit hates mobile apps era. Um, and I'll show you what I'm using for Reddit instead on the next screen. All right. And again, day one, too. People really like it. It's a journaling application. Um, but I moved away from day one when I moved into Obsidian and started doing daily notes. So I don't really journal in day one, but I do have all of my archive in here. Uh, and this archive from day one has been exported. It's backed up on my home server, uh, but I just have the app on here anyway for no real reason. Miscellaneous. Um, Priority Pass is part of a perk of the Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card. So it gives you lounge access for free. Uh, although I hear this uh, benefit is going away in July which is a real bummer because I never really used it as much as I should have. Um, I have some travel things. TripIt, I use all the time for all of my travel. Uh, National Rental Car, that's the service that I use for renting cars, so that's on here as well. Um, Owler Fozcam gives me access to security cameras around my apartment, um, but like some of my other home server stuff, this is only accessible on my home network. Uh, and so there's just some that I can only use at home, and I just know that. Uh, building link is, I live in a giant apartment and building link is the app that I use to connect and reserve amenities and access the front desk and all that stuff. Uh, subway time is a fantastic New York city application where you can see all of the subways you can click in, you can see subway times for when trains are going to be arriving. And then you can click in and see when this particular train is scheduled to arrive at different stations. So I use this all the time to know when to leave my apartment, to know which station I want to go to, et cetera, et cetera. So subway time is definitely an application that I really can't do without. Um, Proton Calendar, I don't really use as much. I use iCal as like my main CalDAV server or whatever, um, but it's here just in case I need to access it. 
And Pushover is a notification manager. So I have some home server stuff set up to give me push notifications. They're monitoring my website. They're monitoring activity on the home server. So I'll get push notifications through Pushover when things happen on my server. Games. I'm not going to click through every single game, but needless to say, these are ones that I play sometimes. Uh, I've noticed that if I keep a game on my home screen here, so I have two dots, as you can see, Solitaire Plus right here. These are the ones that I'm usually go to games, but other ones that I enjoy that I play less frequently, I'll keep in this folder here. Um, Noodles is fantastic. Uh, and then Offsuit is a fantastic Texas Hold'em minimalist game. So, and Slay. So if I could call out three apps from this screen uh, in terms of games, I would say Slay, Offsuit, and Noodles and Noodles 2 are definitely the best. Shopping, anything related to money like Amazon, uh, Mischief, which is fun, the Apple Store. I'm just going to keep them in this folder just in case I ever need them. Reservations, so like Resi, Open Table, that sort of thing. The next app is Lurker, and this is the Reddit app that I absolutely love. So this basically doesn't let you do anything like upvote, comment, none of the advanced features. But the way that it gets away with this is... You can see at the very bottom where it says rate limit. So what it's doing is this app will manually keep you in the free tier for API access, which totally works for all of my browsing needs. So this allows me to browse Reddit at my leisure um, and then not actually pay for anything. So it's a very nice free Reddit application that if you're missing Apollo uh, and you don't care about commenting or interacting with posts, I highly recommend have a folder called never use which is next which is just kind of like a hodgepodge of applications that i wanted to keep on my phone but i never actually use uh and then let's go into social social is all of the social media messaging apps things like that um sometimes use signal uh square fit is an app that i use to manually cut out photos for sharing on instagram just because i'm weird and i edit in squares like that um, Partyful is an event RSVP and hosting website that's kind of like Facebook events, but isn't tied to Facebook. Really great. I used it to host a few events recently, so I highly recommend that if you're hosting events. Um, also got a few other random things that I don't really use that frequently on some of these other pages here. Letterboxd is where I track all of my movies that I watch just because I like making notes of everything that I'm watching, mostly for me. Uh, I don't really have any friends or anybody that I'm following on Letterboxd. It's more kind of a log in terms of collecting data and writing notes to my future self about what I thought of videos. Um, TikTok on the home screen, I think we all know what that is, if that sticks around for a while or not. In the news section, I've got books, news, New York Times, Patreon, where I have a few subscriptions that I subscribe to, like a podcast that I like or some artists that I like. Reader is an RSS reader that I really like. Uh, in terms of RSS, I manage that, again, on my home server using an application called Fresh RSS. Um, I have a Substack app here, but I don't really use it that much. And Omnivore is a read it later app. So Omnivore is like an alternative to Readwise but Omnivore is open source and free. I switched maybe three months ago and I really like it a lot. So that's my read it later app in there. Everything related to health goes in here. Uh, the things to call out, I would say, are the Sleep Tracker app. So Sleep Tracker is Simmons Beauty Rest and it tracks your sleep by having a little pad that goes underneath your mattress. So you don't have to wear any ring. You don't have to have any sort of wearable you just slip this pad under your mattress and it tells you what your sleep score is. And so that's really nice. Uh, Lose It is the calorie counting app that I really like when I count calories, which is not very often. Uh, Paprika is a fantastic recipe manager app that I store all of my recipes in. And Happy Scale is, uh, it allows you to track your weight over time and it normalizes your ups and downs. I track my weight every morning. I've been doing it for maybe three or four years every day. So at this point, I have a long data set that is interesting to look at in happy scale, uh, but I won't be revealing in this video. Uh, what else do I got in here? Um, I, I guess New York Times cooking, I just put in here, which I use sometimes. 
didn't realize that was in health. But again, usually cooking, I'll just navigate and find this app through Spotlight. So this is just a, a home to keep it in. Uh, Two Dots is a fun game. Time Hop, I check every morning. I've been doing that every morning for maybe like five years. Time Hop basically shows you all of your social media and pictures from today's date on every year's past. So you can kind of see what you were doing on today's April 8th, on April 8th, last year, the year before, so on and so forth. So I check that every day. Slack, of course, messaging, work, that sort of thing. Things I showed in my last video, uh, I access this a lot on my phone. Usually it's open to the inbox where I can just quickly add things, um, but I have all of my projects and everything accessible at the click of a finger, which I really like having. Uh, Deliveries is an app that I use to track any delivery that I have incoming. Uh, I feel like I've tried other delivery applications and this one is far and away the best, uh, but it doesn't get the most support. So I'm sort of in this crossroads where I wish they would support it more because there aren't any other alternatives, but it's the best still. So that's what I use. Obsidian, of course, I use this on the mobile all the time. Uh, Tot is another application. I don't want to open this up, but this basically gives you, I think it's six kind of post-it notes almost. So you can write ephemeral notes to yourself and then copy and paste it between devices. So I have Tot on my phone. I have Tot on my laptop. And I know that they have continuity where theoretically you could copy something from your laptop and then just paste it on your phone and it works like magic. For me, I like to do that a little bit more manually and Tot is my answer for that. So that's just kind of where I write small notes to myself that are ephemeral and I don't care if they're deleted or erased, um, even though they usually stick around. Plex Amp is, it uses Plex to stream music from your home server. So rather than using Spotify or other music apps, usually I just have a lot of my music on my home server here and then I stream it using Plex. And this is the player on my phone for that. Uh, Clear is a fantastic to-do list manager that just released a new version. I've been using this for years. It's one of the first iPhone apps that ever came out. Um, and this thing is fantastic. I really like this icon because you can choose a bunch of different icons, but Clear is definitely something I highly recommend. And then Mercury is the weather app that I use in addition to Carrot Weather. I really like Mercury just because it's really simple. This is the entire application. Uh, you can see the hourly forecast here. You can see the daily forecast highs and lows here. And this is usually where I'm going and checking my weather on a day-to-day -day basis. So the first screen are basic apps. The second screen are frequently used, or these are kind of core applications to my life. And then the next screen is kind of where I have apps that I'm not sure if I want to integrate into my system or there are kind of spillover applications. So I have some GitHub uh coloring in here just to serve as motivation and inspiration for how active I'm being in terms of productivity and coding and checking things into GitHub. I have a little bit of widget to control some things around my home really easily and quickly. Um, I have a crypto folder. I don't really do much with crypto, but I have it here just in case I want to access the like hundred dollars that I put in as just play money several years ago. Um, all of my AI related applications are in here. ChatGPT, which I don't actually use that frequently. Typing Mind, I mentioned this in a past video or in my newsletter, one of those two. Typing Mind is just a front end that allows you to put in your API keys for uh, ChatGPT, for Anthropic, for Google Gemini, whatever you want. So it gives you a front end to access LLMs via API, which means you're only charged for usage. Um, and this is something that I use every day. I have this on my laptop that I'm using. I have it on my phone, that sort of thing. Um, Replica are AI people that you talk to. Um, I read a lot of news stories about people falling in love with their Replica bots. And so I wanted to try it. Uh, but this is definitely not something that I really use. But it's still in there from years ago when I was trying the app. Uh, for travel, everything just goes into this folder. Um, I'm taking a flight soon on JetBlue, another one on Alaska. So I access these not very frequently, but frequently enough that I just keep them on my phone rather than downloading them and deleting them and then downloading them and deleting them. Uh, here's a spillover of games. These I really 
don't use that much. I always have high aspirations of playing more games. And then when it comes down to it, I'll just do a quick game of solitaire instead. Um, but these are all games that for one reason or another, I read good things about, I liked them, I've tried them and I have aspirations of playing them again one day, even though I don't really touch them that much. Segway Ninebot, I used to have an electric scooter, but then my building banned them, so I don't anymore, but I haven't deleted the app yet. Um, call Sheet is kind of expensive for me. It, it's kind of a replacement to IMDB that is more premium. It's made by Casey Liss of the Accidental Tech podcast, which I really like. Um, I downloaded it just to see if it was something that I would use more, and it's not. Um, I haven't deleted it yet, but that's why that's in the spillover area, just because this is kind of stuff that is spillover. Storygraph is an alternative to Goodreads, which is what I use to track all of the books that I read. Uh, eventually, I'll probably move this onto this screen somewhere. I just haven't yet. I don't really read that many books, and so I'm not accessing it that frequently. And so having it here is just kind of a reminder that I should read more, although I should put it away at some point. YT, YT Studio is a new addition because I just started creating YouTube apps like this one. Uh, this allows you to kind of see all of your stats and I can open this up. No reason not to show how I'm doing in YouTube. So this is a really cool app for YouTube creators that allows you to see kind of how your content is doing, analytics uh, for views and watch time over time, individual videos, uh, and then comments. You can kind of see what people are saying on your videos. So I use this all the time as I'm actively working on YouTube and having a blast with that. And the YT Studio app is great. Spruce is like communicating with doctors. Uh, I guess United, I can move this to travel. I downloaded that because I had a United app recently. Uh, Capture, I kind of thought this might be a replacement to things in terms of my inbox. I don't really like it as much. Uh, Tingus Goose, I guess I downloaded yesterday. It's a game. I haven't tried it yet, but that's still on this screen because again, this is kind of like an overflow slash inbox of apps of things I want to try, but I haven't gotten around to yet. Uh, same here. These are just an overview, uh, uh, a spillover that I haven't figured out how to organize yet. It's a to-do list of these are all things I want to process as apps. Um, and that brings us to the end. That is the full tour of my phone and how I'm using it. So as you can see, I really like apps. Um, hopefully you got some ideas for some apps you might want to look into and try. My best tips for people is to kind of have structure. So like I said, page one and page two are my core. This is where I'm mostly spending my time when I'm on my phone. And then to access most apps, I swipe down and I type the name of the app because I know what app I want to use. And so I'm not kind of like searching through folders to be like, wait, where was that thing? What I'm doing instead is pulling down and typing the name of the application here. And then it's allowing me to just click on maps. And then, yeah, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this and this is the video uh, for this week. If you have any questions or if you have any apps that you really like, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, and like always, like, subscribe, let me know if you like this sort of content or if you just want me to stick to productivity, obsidian, all that sort of stuff. And I'll see you or you'll see me in the next video. Have a good one.